Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my art journal page in my gel print journal that was inspired by the Art Joy of Sharing Art Community group on Facebook, um, the mood board. So I've posted the mood board at the beginning of the video so that you can see and I am going to use this photo that I found on unsplash.com which is a place that you can get photos that are uh, copyright and royalty free and I'm going to use that um, because of the picture of the person dancing on the mood board and then um, I have picked some stencils based on the shapes in the mood board and some colors based on the colors in the mood board. And I have a few of these cleanup pages left from a project that I was, I did at a different time and it has a lot of pastel colors, similar colors to the mood board, but they need to be pumped up a bit. So I am doing some shape stenciling and color stenciling over the top of these cleanup pages from gel printing session and uh, using much brighter colors. In the mood board there was some pomegranates and so I picked pomegranate seed as one of my colors as well as this stencil that looks like pomegranate seeds kind of. And then um, there was some citrus and a uh, slice of citrus and uh, kind of a sunflower shape which are both kind of circular shapes. So I picked this labyrinth circular stencil and the tangerine dream and pure sunshine uh, paint colors to kind of coordinate with that and then in the mood board there is some kind of turquoisey teal sky colors and so I picked the um, I can't remember what that one's called vibrant turquoise I think uh, paint these are all dilutions paints and then I also have a yellow color which is from Dina Wakely paints that is called lemon and it's the lightest color that I have this stencil with the um, stacked rectangles, it's called mortar, um, not Mordor like, you know, where in Lord of the Rings, mortar like in the blocks cemented together. <laughs> I know, weird reference. Uh, but it reminds me in, in the photo that I'm using, um, there's some kind of, some sort of vertical buildings or something in the background that kind of has those shapes and then also this one with the mark making um, little hash hash marks stencil also kind of reminds me of that stacked something in the background of the photo um, that gives that gives the photo interest because it's got these vertical pieces that are in the background so I'm using that stencil as well so the stencils and the colors were all really picked based on the mood board and the shapes and colors in the mood board. So I'm turning these cleanup papers into something much more interesting by stenciling over the top. And this is this is a fun thing to do with your collage papers, especially if you like a lot of pattern and interest in your collage papers. Uh, some people prefer to just have something more mellow and sometimes I'm like that too. But um, sometimes I just want something fun and colorful and, and bright and and interesting to your eye. I also used a couple of mark making tools that I have uh, tubes uh, to add a little bit of white circles over the top. Again, imitating those circular shapes on the mood board. This type of challenge is so fun to me. Um, I really <laughs> enjoy looking at something, you know, this condensed down photos just, you know, ready, ready for me to get inspiration from them. It's, it's something I enjoy. So I took the photo from Unsplash and I cut the girl out, the girl that's dancing, and she just looks like she's having so much fun. She's got some funky music on, she's just moving to the beat, um, just completely in her own zone. So she's going to be my focal image and then I'm building up my background with all these other pieces over a kind of lighter colored but still in the same family um, gel print in my stitch gel print journal. And I'll be sure to put an I card up at the top so that you can figure out how I stitched the, these gel prints together to make this big journal. 
This is the very last page in it, but that doesn't mean that the other pages are done. It's it's almost empty. There's probably only maybe at the most at the most 10 pages done in it. I just sometimes want to do the last page so that it's not left as the last page and, you know, left forever. I have so many journals and I don't I rarely complete one complete journal. I just keep hopping around, but I do really enjoy working over gel prints that have, you know, there's already color on there. It's not just a blank white page. There's already pattern and um, I enjoy working over them. So this is a fun journal to work in. So I'm cutting some of these pieces into these stacked vertical rectangles, um, making sure that the stenciled part is going vertically, except for at the bottom, I have like a base, you know, the, the ground. Um, those, those have some of the the pattern going in a different direction. And I'm cutting them from different pieces, making these things that uh, look kind of like buildings in the very far distance. And then up at the top, I have the more circular shapes as if there's some swirling clouds or a sunshine or something like that in the sky in the background, maybe a sunset over some clouds. And then I, of course, after I've laid everything out, I am gluing these collage pieces down using Liquitex matte gel medium and my little collage brush, which really helps me get an even coat of the medium. Um, most of this, in fact, all this paper is printer paper, you know, like just regular to put in your printer type paper that I used for the gel printing. And so I'm spritzing the back of it and then applying the medium and that kind of softens the fibers in the paper and helps it to glue a little bit better, helps it to lay down a little bit better as I'm attaching them to the page. And you know, I laid everything out. Did I get it exactly the same? Probably not. <laughs> a good idea to do if you really want to plan your layout and get it exactly as you had planned is to take a photo with your, your phone um, when you have it all laid out before you glue it down and then you can refer back to that photo and see how you put the pieces. But I just winged it. I didn't do that. My fingers were covered with paint and stuff and I didn't want to touch my phone. <laughs> my poor phone gets so abused from all the, the paint and, and matte medium and stuff and splatters it gets on it all the time. Poor thing. So I'm just about glue down, done gluing everything down. Now, the photo I printed out from unsplash.com on regular printer paper with regular ink. And so before I did anything, I sealed that using some uh, clear gesso to just make sure that all the ink is sealed in before I start messing with it. Because I plan to turn it into a painterly look by painting over the top of it. So I'm getting out some paint, um, a red, a blue and a yellow, it's that same lemon, and then uh, Lapis and Ruby from the Dina Wakely Heavy Body Paints. And when you mix those th three colors together, they make a skin tone brown. And um, this girl is a uh, darker skin, maybe she's Latino, maybe she is black, I'm not sure, but uh, she does have curly hair and she has darker skin. So I do have some white uh, some titanium white paint on my palette as well. And I've zoomed this in so that you could watch the process of painting it, but then I realized you can't see my palette when I'm doing this. So I thought you were going to be able to see me mixing the paint and applying it. But I'm starting with the darkest shadows. Uh, I started painting her skin first. And I put a dark brown in the shadow areas. And then I mix a little bit of uh, yellow and white and titanium white into that color to make a lighter color and then I mix some white even more white in to make an even lighter color than that and I'm blending it all together. Um, this is a fun process and it's an easy way to get uh, a painted but yet fairly realistic uh, figure but I kind of wished it had been larger. It was so tiny that it was, especially her face, it was really hard to get uh, the colors blended on her face. So 
it looks okay and from a distance you don't really notice any flaws but up close when you see the close-up pictures her face looks a little um, a lot more basic than you would expect <laughs> of course it's just three colors blended there's you know not endless depths of color like there is in real skin um, were this in oil painting it would be easier to blend and blend and blend and blend because the oil paint doesn't dry as quickly as acrylic paint especially in my area dries very quickly so the blending isn't as easy to do with acrylic paint but I'm adding you know the areas of shadow and highlight like you do to try to make a fairly a fairly realistic looking skin so then I wanted her to have a white halo around her that makes her stand out from the background and makes it look like she's shining from within and she's got all this light coming out from her and so I just used the white that was on my palette to go around the entire figure and add that white halo around and um, in some cases blending it out with my finger in some cases blending it out with the brush but um, I just thought it made her in in the mood board the light is shining onto the dancer from the back and so she ha also has that kind of halo effect so that's kind of the effect I wanted was a halo of light shining from this person so then I continue to paint um, uh, mix a little bit more different colors and I've got the highlights going on the shadows going on and then um, at some point I mix some kind of reddish a lot more warm toned brown for her lips and cheek bone area to add a little bit of um, warm color to those areas but as you can see the <laughs> the face is like I don't know the size of a dime maybe it's maybe a little bit bigger than that a penny maybe but it's hard to uh, paint it it's tricky 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 so then I use black paint on the hair just kind of dabbing it on a little bit with the brush and then I end up blending a little bit lighter uh, a lighter dark by blending the black with some of the brown and then also then blending almost kind of like a, a warm gray for the highlights on the hair but this does change what is a photograph into a, something that looks like a little painting so it's a fun technique it's it's uh, I'd recommend it it also maybe if you're not really comfortable with painting figures and faces this kind of gives you a lesson on where shadows and highlights live on a realistic something like this and you could you don't even have to just do it with with faces <laughs> or bodies you could do it with anything you could you know print a photograph of any subject and really teach yourself where the shadows and highlights should go on any subject so then I changed her t-shirt into a yellow t-shirt with um, you know shadows made out of the the orange tones instead of a white t-shirt to go to blend into the background better and then I'm using the different colors on my palette the black um, to fill in the dark areas of her shorts and just blend constantly blending lighter and darker colors I needed a little bit of a lighter grayish black because she had some detail where her belt was and then I'm filling in the darkest areas of the checkered shirt and then adding some of the orange for some of the squares and sort of changing the colors of the clothing that she's wearing without really changing the style just the colors because I want them to blend in with the background I want it to be cohesive um, of course you could go with contrasting colors instead 
of coordinating colors if you wanted to. I'm adding some of that teal that's coming in from the background into some of the checks on the shirt and that's really when it starts changing color. Um, it becomes a teal and orange and yellow and black checkered shirt <laughs> instead of the colors that it was. The only color I didn't use in the focal image that I have in the background is that pomegranate, that dark red color. I didn't end up using that one, but everything else I brought in and spread throughout the composition. Just having lots of fun, adding some of that yellow. And then I decided to change her um, hiking boots or work boots into teal colored boots. So I start with the teal, then I mix it with some white and um, fill in parts of it. And then I use some black and mix a darker color for the soles and for the shoelaces. So this was a lot of fun. I um, I enjoyed this mood board. This mood board was created this month by Peg Robinson. Um, we trade off in our joy of sharing our responsibilities back and forth. There are also um, lots of other video creating artists in the group, and there's a challenge. There's challenges each month, and so. They're making videos that you can go and watch too. So Art Joy of Sharing Art Community is a great place to hang out and um, share your art and get inspiration from other people, other artists who are posting their work, posting videos, things like that. So I'm just about done, I think, painting. I'm still touching up her face, trying to a little bit. Um, I kind of felt like I needed a magnifying glass <laughs> Maybe my vision isn't as good as I think it is. But I'm just about done with that part. And I will move on to something else. I've got my black Stabilo All Pencil, and I just want to add some shadows along these vertical building sort of shapes that are in the background to differentiate them from each other. And then I blend that with a water brush. Stabilo All Pencil is a very water reactive, like really water reactive pencil. So it's very easy to blend with a little bit of water. You could do this with just a regular brush, but I like to use these brushes that have the water in the barrel. Um, I find them really super easy to use with any type of water color type situation that I might be doing. These ones are from Arteza. I also have the Pentel ones. I just like them. I probably have maybe 12 or 15 of them in all different shapes and sizes. So I'm adding that shadow to one side of each building with the pencil, blending it out, and uh, not really realizing that I still have this zoomed in. I also went around the edges of the page with some memento black ink. Uh, I like I, I like a border around my pages lots of times. And so that just gives a little bit of a border around the entire thing. And then I'm blending in some of the uh, the, the pieces in the background. Uh, they look very much like they are just stuck on there. I can see the edges. So I'm using some of that leftover white paint on my palette and my finger to unify those, blending them into the background and just, I don't know, making it more blended. I got some splatter action with a little bit of the leftover turquoise and orange on the palette and uh, I just like splatters. <laughs> the final thing I did was to print out the words dance like no one's watching on my brother P touch uh, label maker and put that on the page with a little bit of shading from the Stabilo all pencil and the page is pretty much done all inspired by the art joy of sharing mood board for May 2019. I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please remember to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment or question below which I will try to answer within a couple days if not sooner. 
And of course, you can uh, pin this on Pinterest, share it on Facebook. And if this is the last video you're watching today, please um, click on to another video before you <laughs> uh, turn it off so that it doesn't appear as if my video was, you know, the one that sent you away from YouTube. So that's it for me. Oh, yes, there, are, of course, are white highlights with the white Posca pan. Can't forget that. Anyway, bye-bye. <laughs>